All right. All right, so I want to speak a little bit about, about my life. I want to tell you some of the struggles I've been through. Um, I lived a very not, not privileged life, but a very lucky life. You know, I'm very lucky that my uh, depression didn't do me in, you know. It could have gotten the worst of me. And um, a lot of things that I've said I, I wouldn't say today because they're wrong and they didn't come out right. And... Um, a lot of things that I said to people weren't okay or weren't appropriate now that I look back on it as I'm much older because it's not okay to make fun of people. It's not okay to be mean to them. You got to treat others the way you want to be treated. So it's me reflecting back on my past as why did I say this? Why was I mean to this person? Why did I say this to that person? When I w but I wouldn't do it today if I were to go back in time to to say something different. It would be much more nicer. It would be much more polite. It wouldn't be as mean or as, it wouldn't be as inappropriate and unacceptable as it was then, then for if it was for me to go back in time and fix it, you know? You can't go back in your past and change it. Um, but I've struggled with depression, and I still do, still, still do this day, every single day. I have to wake up, and I have to get to work on getting my head straight, getting everything in line, making sure that I wake up, making sure that I do the right thing, and follow my calling, which is continue to educate people about freedom and liberty, and do the right thing and leave people be. Not, not, I don't want to wake up, but I have to. I don't want to, I don't want to sleep in. I, I sleep in, but I need to get up to take a shower and stuff like that. So I never would have thought my life would turn out to be this way, but it did. And I never would have thought that it could have been, I always had the thought in the back of my mind that it could have been a lot worse, that I could have been beating it out, you know, for saying the wrong thing and being mean and inappropriate to somebody. I could have had brain damage, you know, or something I said to somebody, you know, I could have provoked somebody in a rage and they could have done something extremely violent. So I've always had it in the back of my mind that I lived a very lucky life and things turned out a lot luckier and a lot better than I anticipated. Looking back on all the things I've said and done and all the things I've said to people like 10, 15 years ago. So um, it's about reflecting and maturing and understanding. You cannot go back in the past and uh, change it. But the only thing you can do is continue to treat others the way they want to be treated and treat them as they treat you. If you're nice to them and they're nice to you, there's no need, there's no meaning, there's no, there's no desire, no temptation to be rude if they're mean, if they're nice to you. And um, if somebody is being a butthead, doesn't mean I gotta be one too. I still be nice, you know, the golden rule. Doing to others that others are doing to you. So even if somebody's being mean, I'm not going to be mean unless they provoke it or they are mean first and they're not nice a few minutes afterwards and they have hold some sort of grudge or something in the past or they, um, they hold on to something that I said to them 15, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 5 years ago. If they still hold that sort of animosity and whatever they have in them, you know. So I don't hold anything against anyone of what they've done in the past or said, you know. I don't I don't hold people back from their past. I don't judge anyone from their past because that's not how life is. We move, we evolve, and we change. We don't stay the same we were five years ago or a year ago. We change, we evolve according to how we live and according to 
how fast you mature or don't mature. And um, so I'm really lucky that um, I got a hold of my depression and um, I still struggle with it every day. And I'm lucky that that didn't take me in and do me in as long as it lasted. And I'm lucky that it didn't get any worse, far worse than what it already was that I was suffering for the four years that I was suffering from depression. Um, I'm lucky that it didn't get any worse and wind up ending me for good. So I literally put myself off of the, the path of complete uh, how my personal how, not the religious type of how, but my own version of how, and pick myself off the beat to eat and gain weight and to become healthy and to become who I wanted to be after those, after those four years. I had to go to the doctor and get diagnosed and um, get it to work. I, I had to get control of it and get down to manage and manage and lucky it didn't get any worse. I'd say now I am a lot better and um, I am doing pretty good. And um, so again, not a privileged life. I've been made fun of my whole life. You know, I, I've had people make fun of me all my life. I've had people joke around with me, have people call me names, you know, because of these wearing hearing aids and glasses, you know, so definitely not privileged. I got in trouble the second when I was in school. I wasn't any different than anyone else. I wasn't treated any different. I didn't have any special privileges or special accommodations or anything preventing me from getting in trouble. I didn't have any special passes or anything just because I was disabled. I wasn't treated any different and I didn't expect to be treated any different than anyone else. And I don't expect to be, but I don't expect to be treated like crap either. So I have a certain expectation from people. So um, not a high expectation of everyone, but uh, a high enough expectation that I at least expect you to try to, if, if you're having a bad day, I'm not going to hold that against you. If you you had a bad day and you say, hey, I need to talk to you. Hey, I, if you, if you, if you're having a bad day and you call me a name and then you apologize the next day, I'm not going to hold that against you, you know. You're having a bad day, you accidentally called somebody a name or maybe you called me a name the day before. I'm not going to hold that against you. I don't hold those type of things against people because I know people make mistakes. I know people aren't perfect. But when I look back at my life, I realized that I'm really lucky that somebody didn't, didn't take advantage of me and really damage my brain or hurt me bad enough to where I was hospitalized or anything like that. I'm really, really lucky and I feel really um, blessed in a non-religious way, blessed in a general way that life turned out the way it turned out to be. And um, really, I can't describe my life other than extremely lucky because um, there's a lot of things that I've said, stupid shit I've said to people, and uh, it was really, it wasn't okay, and then it wasn't okay then. It's not, and then I, if I were to go back in time, I still wouldn't say it's okay now. Um, so, again, I don't cover up anything, I don't hide anything, I don't. Um, but I don't hold anything against anyone. I'm not going to tell anyone any different. I would tell you guys the same thing that if I remember I said this to the person, I would be honest that yes, I did say this to this person, but it wasn't okay. I would condemn it and say no, it was inappropriate, and I'm much more mature now. And But I don't hide anything in, in my past. I don't hide anything of what I've said or what I've done. You know, I admit what I do and I admit when I'm wrong, and I admit, and I try to tell the truth as much as I can, and try to tell people that you gotta play your cards right. You're, de you're dealt a crappy hand. You gotta deal that crappy hand 
really, really careful. And you got to find deep meaning. You got to find understanding. And you can't hold yourself from the path you on now. You, you can't hold the past against yourself. You got to let that go as much as it might bother you. The faster you can let it go, the further in the view view mirror it's going to be. And the faster you can mature and the quicker you can get to maturity and understanding and clarity. And finally, get over that haunting thought or thing you said to that person. So don't hold your past against yourself. But only realize that you made a mistake and you don't go back and repeat that same mistake or do the same thing over again. You learn from the mistake. You realize they did the wrong thing. You admit it and you told them the truth and you told them that you're sorry or you somehow made some amends with the past and you move on. So the only way I can describe my life right now from 28, almost 29, is extremely lucky, not privileged. Because privilege would mean I never got in trouble and I and I did get in trouble. I had like but I only had like three or four de, four detentions in school, but I still got in trouble nevertheless. So it definitely wasn't privileged by any means. Even though probably the whitest person probably probably one of the whitest persons you guys have ever seen. But by no means does that mean I'm white privilege. I mean I I've been dealt a really crappy hand and um being disabled does not grant you any privilege, no matter what color you happen to be, no matter how tall or how short you are, it's not going to grant you anything. Damn sure not white privilege, for sure. So I, I definitely haven't been privileged, I've been lucky. So, um, and I do know some people do talk about that type of stuff, but I don't, I guess, I mean, I could see where they're coming from if they use that term, but I don't really necessarily agree with it. Like, what if somebody said Mexican privilege or, or black privilege, or what if they use a different way? What if they not, what if they use something else? Then what does that mean, you know? So, it's just, I'm saying, like, what if somebody uses a different way? Does that automatically mean, though, that way is privilege, or this way isn't privilege, you know? that divide and conquer what they use against all of us for for them to further their agenda. So again, that's another thing that we can consider is they use the terms and they class class and group us into certain conspiracy theories, not jobs, and all this other stuff to get us to argue among ourselves and not to look at the enemy, which is the, the henchmen, the politicians, and the people who follow the orders, not our common allies, our neighbors. Our neighbors are not our enemies. Our, our libertarian friends are not our enemies. Our fellow freedom fighters are not our enemies. Our common enemy is the state and the people who follow the orders and believe in the politicians. That's our, that's our goal, It's ending those who believe in that institution. That's our common enemy. A common enemy is not ourselves and other races and ethnicities and genders. Our enemy is not those things. Our enemy is always, will always be the state and the federal world. If we can get rid of one and the other and both at the same time, I don't know about that. I don't think it can uh, all at once, but we can get a large section of the population to stop believing in hallucinating and politicians. Then the federal drug will eventually, it may not ever go away, but people will stop using federal drug notes and will maybe switch to sound money and demand gold and silver and then America goes back being great again. So I say that America is great not by terror, not by taxes, not by the federal reserve, but by freedom and liberty. That's what made America great in the first place, in free market. Not communism, not uh, not by bashing the businessman and woman, 
Now by putting this group against that group, not putting this gender against that gender, it's never been about that, although the media and the media pundits happen to make it among about those things, it's always been the ruling class against the, the lower, the royalty, the highest of the high, and the us, the people. So our common enemy is the ruling class and those who believe in following and carrying out their political orders and hits on people. So until we get rid of the state, whether whether it's through evolution of thought or the world wakes up and stops believing in politicians altogether, then our enemy is not our each other. It's not female versus male, not white versus black. It is always the state versus all of us uh, uh, against them. It's not you, it's not me, it's not my neighbor, it's not my this generation against that generation. It's not that. That's the divide and conquer again. That's the problem reaction solution. They're using the, the message of pitting this gender, or not gender, this generation against this generation and making us argue among ourselves so they don't focus on what they're doing in passing and what they are trying to do behind the scenes to maneuver and move the agenda forward and prevent us from seeing the agenda at hand and the agenda at play. So we have to be 10 steps ahead of them. We can't be 10 steps behind. Uh, I'm not talking about the politicians, the, the puppets. I'm talking about the, the, the Rockefellers, the, the Rothschild dynasty, and all those families, and not the Illuminati or the, any of those other secret societies or the Freemasons. I'm talking about the people who really control this world. The financial, the money system, the media, the ones who control those institutions until America gets rid of the media and the monetary system and end the wars. Nothing and absolutely nothing is going to change. It's going to continue to get worse and worse until the people demand that we shut down the federal group and we put the end to all the, the blatant disregard for all of our rights and continuous endless support of wars. So those wars are both blamed on Republican and Democrat Party not following the non-interventionist foreign policy and not following uh, you know, treating uh, other nations the way they should be treated, uh, talking and trading with them, but using the threat of force and uh, the threat of any other military advancement or any sanctions or any sort of covert and overt things. America wasn't found on uh, overthrowing and bombing countries and whatever. America was found on overthrowing democratically elected countries and being the policeman of the world. America was found on freedom and the philosophy of liberty and not founded on a thousand bases and placing the whole entire world for corporations and banks to run them off and uh, merge with the state to get subsidies and corporate bailouts and welfare. Uh, America wasn't found on that. So how did I get to where I am today? Well, um, I was born on December 17, 1989, and um, I was born a premature baby at one part in Lebanon. So, uh, I spent about a year in the hospital uh, yeah, before I went home the first time, and uh, I had I had 
had a lot of problems. They said I wasn't going to do it. They, they told my parents in the band I wasn't going to be smart or do anything that I do now. So I'm um, extremely lucky that things didn't turn out way worse than what they really are today. And what they are a lot worse than after I was born. So I got very lucky, extremely lucky. Definitely not privileged, lucky. So I went through school, I was picked on, I was made fun of all throughout school. Um, I really didn't get picked on until, hmm, I want to say middle school. And it, it didn't really start in elementary or the third, fourth, fifth grade, I was okay. Started in the middle school and then it really started to uh, pick up the pace in high school. So I wasn't picked on all the time, but I was made fun of more times than I can count. And I was picked on more than, I wouldn't beat up or anything, but I was picked on, I was made fun of my whole life. And I've been very blessed and lucky to even be here. And then shortly before I graduated high school, my father passed away. I was depressed for about a year, year and a half before I got back to normal. I really struggled with that. I don't struggle so much anymore. But I lost my father and that really resonated with me. And um, shortly before he died, I, um, he said something about Obama. He started talking about politics. I don't know what, I didn't never got to end. I never got to ask him what party did he vote in or what he supported. Um, but that was my inspiration for getting into politics. And then one time I happened to be on YouTube and I clicked on this video. I was like, who's this Ron Paul guy? And I was also on this website. I don't know if you guys ever heard it. I don't even know. If, I don't even think it's even in operation anymore. It's called dailypaul.com. It was a website in 07 and 08, and all it was was just covering Ron Paul. It was like a forum, and it covers Ron Paul 24-7. Uh, I was having conversations, connecting the dots, and um, and uh, talking to people in uh, 07. I, that was when I was still a, a neocon. I was still a statist. I wasn't a freedom advocate like I am now, but I was still a status in 07, 08. Then 09, I started a YouTube channel. And um, so I went 9, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I went about four or five years with that YouTube channel, but I wasn't happy with it. I had over 100,000 views, but I wasn't getting any supporters or subscribers. So I deleted the whole entire YouTube channel because I wasn't, I wasn't proud of the work and I wasn't, um, I just had a lot of regrets about doing it. So I deleted the whole entire YouTube channel. So um, I deleted the YouTube channel, whole thing, 100,000 views, and uh, wasn't, wasn't satisfied with it. Um, but during that, I had, um, I had very deep understanding of media and how they were used to manipulate and still manipulate to this very day thousands of minds. I, I ain't going to say millions because there's more of an emphasis on the internet more than ever for its main alternative media and all media goes as compared to uh, five, ten years ago when there wasn't no thing at social media or YouTube. Especially 10 years ago. So I started paying attention to Ron Paul. Then I heard libertarianism. I was like, what is libertarianism? I Googled libertarianism. And then I Googled blowback. And I started watching a video with Ron Paul. And that's when I understood blowback, not an invention. I started Google and researching, and um, to be a doc, um, I got lucky because I was on a forum. I can't remember the name of it now, but 
But um, I think it's like ETI food. It's not al- alcohol, it's tobacco and firearms, but it's a form that has conspiracy theories on it. Um, but anyway, I was in the forum and I was about obsessive for about four years in the conspiracy theory. I don't speak about them anymore, not because I don't want to, but because I don't, because a lot of people are aware of Operation Mockingbird, Operation Northwood, that's common knowledge by now, so I don't speak about those anymore. Not because I don't want to, but because it's just, it's common knowledge and everyone knows by now. So it's not that I don't want to talk about conspiracy theories. It's just that I know that they're common among people who research those kind of things. So about four years, that was when I began to wake up to the UN and uh, 09, 08, 09, 010, around there. Is when I got George Orwell's 1984. I read that book, and I read The Creatures from Jekyll Island. Around that same time, I started a YouTube channel that told you guys that I deleted. And um, so The Creature from Jekyll Island opened up a whole new world for me. I think I read it, the whole thing about once or twice. I can't quite remember. I believe it was once. I do remember about the creating money out of thin air, which is uh, kind of fitting and not at all how to create wealth from uh, being productive. You don't create wealth by creating money out of thin air. They just buy you the currency, so it's not wealth. It, it, it's, a, it's a way of robbing you of your purchasing power and, 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 and inflation is also a tax too. So, um, it's a way to rob you of your purchasing power, and those you get the money first don't get robbed of the purchasing power. Those are the connections inside and outside of the federals are the ones you get the money first, not us, but those you get the money first, which we don't know because it hasn't ever been disclosed because everything they do is studied in secrecy. So anyways, I was big into finding out the federal job and freedom and then rolled around 2012. I watched the debate of Ron Paul. I still remember the South Carolina debate. And, uh, but I first uh, saw Ron Paul with the Giuliani moment and that was the turning point that I knew that something big was going to happen, but I didn't know what was going to manifest you know, manifest out of it. So I didn't know what was going to manifest out of that debate or that moment. And, uh, but I kept paying attention and I eventually got to you, which is voluntarism or libertarianism, consistent libertarianism. So dated for 2009, Neil Khan. I wasn't exactly Neil Khan. I was, I was still a status. I was a, uh, I was I was starting to gear toward freedom and free markets around two. I was a I declared myself an anarchist in September of 2013. August September around then, I finally woke up and said, "Wait, I'm an anarchist. I'm not a status. I'm a volunteer. I'm not a status anymore." So I was walking. And I had an epiphany and I woke up. And I woke up out of the spell that I was in for the government schools and brainwashing and uh, been promoting freedom and peace ever since then. So I learned about media from 09, 010, 011. And it really started to pick up in the, the presidential debate how they screwed Ron Paul over in Tampa, um, how they demonized him, how they used the racist newsletters, newsletters against him, how they used their tactic and that tactic. So then that gave me another uh, viewpoint and another option to look at and view the lens of media and the smear campaign. And I didn't, I know nothing about the fake news or any of the things that I don't know. So, I took from that experience that I couldn't trust the media to provide me with the news. 
So with my background in conspiracy theories, I mean everything from 9-11 to Alien to uh, Northwood, Mockingbird, um, uh, CIA, all of it, all of the geoengineering, chemtrails, all that stuff. I looked up all that stuff for four straight years, not stop. Going to this forum and that forum and this website and that website, researching, typing, now I'm stopped for four years straight, and then I finally said, end it, I'm done. I'm done looking at conspiracy theories. I'm done occupying my time with them. So then that was 9, 10, 11, 12. So I stopped in 2012. 2013, I woke up, I had an epiphany, and I was a volunteer, and I woke up, thank goodness, and I been promoting freedom ever since then, August of 2013. So, whatever, whatever it says on my Facebook on 2013, whatever month. I know it's in 2013, but I can't remember exactly what month. But anyway, I've been promoting freedom ever since. So, fast forward to today is what I'm advocating for now, peace and freedom in non-intervention. So, my, my mother got in trouble. I'm not going to say exactly what it is, but she got in trouble and she got sentenced away in prison for four months. She's sober now, thank goodness, for I believe five going on six years. Uh, 2019 will be six years sober of everything and she has been clean of smoking for I believe seven months. I know the not last month, but I believe the month before. I believe last month, she said six months uh, cigarette free. So she had to smoke a cigarette in six months. But before that, she smoked for like 23, 24 years, all of my life. And till recently, she, six months ago, she quit smoking and uh, she hasn't smoked a cigarette since. So that's good. And, um, so anyway, my mother got in trouble. Um, I, I got a haircut. Um, what's today? Hold on. Uh, I got a haircut yesterday, and I asked my mother what time I was born. I think she said like 5.42 in the morning. So I had a premature baby. I told you guys that earlier. But I was born on December 17th, 1989, at a one pound, 11 ounces. Then two days later, Three days later, I dropped from one pound, three ounces. I spent about a year in the hospital. Uh, stomach problems, I have, I have a scar on my stomach, I'm not gonna show you guys. Scar on my stomach, um, uh, five days old. I have my first stomach surgery, I have IBS. Um, irritable, irritable bowel syndrome. I, I had really bad uh, digestive system, digestive problem when I was a baby and growing up. And they fixed it when I was a baby and growing up. So I had problems with my stomach for a lot of my life, and I still do. So I had that, and um, I have anxiety, and I have depression, so if any of you guys are experiencing that, I'm sorry. I hope that you guys do get better, and I hope that you guys aren't suffering anymore. So, um, not exactly what you call a favorite drug, by any means. Me made fun of depression, lonely, and a unwillingness to go anywhere or do anything for years of pure nothing but crying and not eating anything, not drinking anything, not showering, not sleeping, not doing anything. Just laying in the bed, nothing, doing nothing. And then after my mother got out, the judge let it go um, because to take care of me, um, she took me to a doctor. I got diagnosed with, I believe, depression and anxiety, and they put me on medication. I do take medication and antidepressant for depression, and I do take anti-anxiety medication for anxiety. But I am, 
at will and that you realize there are natural substances and the herbs and supplements. And I have been drinking a lot more water and a lot less pop and a lot less everything and eating a lot more healthy and drinking a lot more water lately. So I'm slowly switching my life on. I knew that I needed to have a better diet and drink more healthier food, uh, drink more healthier drink and eat more healthier food because I wasn't going in the right direction and I felt the need to change. So I don't know exactly what caused my depression. I don't know if it was, I inherited it from my parents. I don't know if it was something in my brain or something to do with not lack of vitamins or my diet. I don't ever recall myself having a very good diet and growing up all day with McDonald's and uh, I wasn't had a very good diet at all. So could have been my diet, could have been the way my brain was wired, could be the lack of vitamin two, could be the lack of a proper healthy and not drinking enough fluid and water and uh, drinking nothing but pop and sugar and caffeine and stuff that's not good for me. And that's totally the antithesis of healthy and proper way of living and proper way of eating nutritious, healthy, and good food. So if any of you are struggling with diet or food, I, I can't help you. Um, I don't know nothing about diet. I've read about diet. I don't know nothing about any of them. I'm not a dietitian. I'm not a, I'm not a healthcare nut. I've, I've read about them. But again, I, that's not my field of expertise. I, 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 all, that can, all that I can recommend is I hope that you get started someday soon and change it on your own. And I leave it up to individuals to decide when they want to start their own healthy diet. I can't make that choice for you. I can only encourage you. I can say, hey, keep eating healthy, keep drinking water, keep losing the weight, keep putting on the muscle. I can say that stuff, but I can't I can't do anything to help you with diet. I don't I'm not a dietitian or a mental or a healthcare professional. I'm just somebody who's uh young and completely inexperienced with diet and inexperienced with anything to do with food. So my best statement is I know nothing because that's true. I know nothing about programming. I know nothing about coding. I know nothing about diet. I know nothing about hair. I know nothing about programming. I know nothing about uh, how to produce a video game. I know nothing about um, a lot of things. Hair, diet, food, how the body operates. I know biology, but I don't know uh, again, I'm skeptical of vaccines. I don't know enough about vaccines to really give you a uh, concrete answer, yes or no. Take this vaccine, yes or no. I, I can't tell you. I've been more skeptical of Big Pharma than I was, but really I can't tell you an honest opinion of yes, take this right, right vaccine or no, don't take this one. That's not my choice. I can't help you there. So I can't help you diet. I can't help you vaccine. I can't help you with food, I can't help you with drink, I can't help you with hair, I can't help you with programming, I can't help you with coding, but I do know uh, enough about Windows. And I've been put a partner around with computers for over mm, almost 18 years, 16, 17 years, 15, 16, 17 years, so quite a while. Um, so for the part, I know enough to help people fix basic things and some advanced things on computers, but I can't fix programming, I can't code, I can't write coding or to, uh, JavaScript or anything like that, I can't help you with, unfortunately. So I got an antidepressant and I take it every single day and I recently got my brother got me a supplement, or I don't know what you call it, some health stuff, called a Gamify. Um, I've been drinking that every day and drinking water, and I got this. Well, it probably, probably needs to be put back in the microwave. 
I'm eating this. This right here. I'm eating that. So I got that to eat. There are stuff to do on personal habits and personal choices. You know, you can't start over from the past and repeat it and change. But you can start right now in the moment and become better and become more healthier and can drink and can change your mood and everything. Everything I've researched, everything I've studied, either connect via diet or had something to do with people changing their diet and getting rid of a bunch of stuff. And I mean lots of stuff like good, uh, anxiety, uh, sometimes depression, sometimes all kinds of things. So all the things that we should and study have uh, similar things to diet, people changing their diet, some people not changing their diet, but some people uh, taking natural substances, herbs, uh, uh, Substance, uh, supplements, vitamins. Uh, some people were doing the prescription drugs that were provided by the doctor or the physician, and it helps some. It's not going to help everyone. I would, I would never recommend that as the first uh, recommendation to anyone getting healthy or anyone uh, willing to fix their life that they been hooked on pharmaceutical drugs. That's not my number one recommendation. My number one recommendation is to look into Rick Sim Simpson oil, hemp oil, weed, um, vitamins, herbs, supplements, water, um, eating good food, drinking water, exercise, um, which I don't get enough of. Um, Having a good social life, having having a good, um, having good relationship with your family if you can, having treating people with uh, to treat others the way you want to be treated, be nice, um, and uh, try to live your best life now in the moment, and uh, look forward to the future wherever your future may be. So. Um, Suffered from four years of depression, and I took my and uh, anti anti depressant for. I got better in about I want to say two three months, month and a half, two months, three months. I got better. I didn't notice. I get. I didn't notice anything until month and a half, two months uh, since the first day that I took the anti depressant. So I felt any sort of relief of crying and uh, relief of any sort of stopping the the tears from coming down. So I felt relief. Well, I took well, I took uh, uh, I took Prozac. I think I took Prozac. I don't take it anymore. But I told my doctor I can't take it anymore. I believe it was might have been something else for them too. I know I have taken Prozac before. I told my doctor, no, I don't want to take Prozac because it is, um, it was giving me suicidal of thought. So I quit taking that and I take a, a, a antidepressant called Lexapro. I'm not going to give you the, the diagnosis and the, the milligrams or anything like that. That's the one I've been taking for a, a long time and it helped a lot for me. But uh, that's not the first recommendation I'd give to anyone, especially you guys. I wouldn't give it to any. I wouldn't give pharmaceutical recommendation, no matter your, no matter what your age is, what your health happened, be even if you're in perfect health or you're in poor health. Uh, that's not the the first and only option I'd give anyone. I would give them the option to always uh, trade in pharmaceutical for natural substance herbs and supplements and the Rick Simpson oil and we if they can get a medical card and get their doctor uh, get their doctor to prescribe them that and their doctor believes in it and they can get it for the medical condition. So um, uh, if you can get marijuana great if you can't 
try to avoid pharmaceuticals at all costs because they are not a fixed one size fits all. They are merely a band aid. Um, even though I, I, I take big pharma, I, I take them by choice. I wouldn't be taking them if I didn't have anxiety, depression, OCD. I would not be taking them at all if I didn't have any of those problems. Um, and I wouldn't have those problems, but I literally shake like crazy when I have anxiety, like panic attack. And um, I get sad all the time. And uh, not all the time, but I do get sad. So um, I really do suffer from those things, and I really do feel like I'm not alone. So me sharing a story makes me feel good because I want other people to feel accepted and for them not to feel alone, that they're not alone in how they think and how they behave towards their own feelings and their own uh, problems. Because you always got to think about it this way. There's always somebody out there that has problems worse than you do. There's people that have no arms and no legs. There's people that have no arms, but like there's people that have no feet and no legs, but they have arms. Or what about the people who have limbs and no arms? You know, there's always, there's always those people out there, there's homeless people in the streets that are homeless and can't get any help. Uh, from either people or the government. You know, governments don't do anything, they only take stuff, they only steal. They don't produce anything. So it would be rather a social and economic problem caused by Fox News or banking and inflation and bubbles and caused by government, not caused by people that choose to be homeless, but caused by intervention of government and interference of central bank and making the prices of things and the purchasing power thing to go down and increase the cost of living and everything else goes up while wages stagnate. So we're not in the economic boom, even though Donald Trump said we are, um, we're in a bubble. We're not in a booming economy. A booming economy is not tear up and it's not um large ten year uh high high all time high deficit. That's not a booming economy. Trade deficits with China at all time high, ten year high, it's not a booming economy. And um as long as the Federal Reserve can create money out of thin air, it can continue to kick the can down the road and continue to make that bubble bigger. All they did, it, all they did was uh, the bubble flipped in 08 and 09, and they reinflated the bubble and made it bigger. And uh, we have we have student loan debt, we have car debt, auto debt, uh, battery student loan debt in the trillion. Uh, overall, li unfunded liabilities that read anywhere from 242 trillion totally unfunded liabilities to 340 trillion uh, around those numbers, various different numbers. I can't give you the exact number, but somewhere in the 200 trillion. Uh, that includes Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and all the interest and all the stuff that uh, the unfunded liabilities, including the black project too, that's not in public domain and funded uh, that's not shown to us American and uh, our government not willing to declassify it and show us. So that includes all the black projects that the CIA and FBI does that's not on public display. And among all the other things too that need, that need to be that the promise to pay like Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. But even then that's not going to last forever either. So what they did was they had the dot-com bubble in the 2000s. Then they uh, lowered interest rates down to zero and uh, got it to where people took out more more uh, mortgage loans and uh, encouraged more lending of money to mortgage uh, mortgages and homeowners to get take out more mortgages, knowing that they weren't able to pay back their mortgages 
and their home 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 mortgages and to default and for their bank to take it and that's when the bubble imploded and burst and the Bernanke's and the Yellens of the world and the the mainstream economists were completely oblivious and blind to the housing bubble and completely uh, inequipped to deal with anything and were completely blindsided by it and were completely uh, didn't give a damn what was going to happen and didn't care that we had a bubble and they completely uh, dismissed it by saying everything's going okay there's no housing bubble uh, inflation is contained and all the other excuses they made especially Bernanke Bernanke said there's no housing bubble there's no crisis there's no nothing everything going according to plan and all the other nonsense that he said and then the 0809 bubble popped and then what happened is we did a bunch of few we did a bunch of we which we, we had interest rate down to zero for eight years uh rate hike and uh quantitative reading QE1, QE2, QE3, and QE indefinitely, and we played the bubble, and all they did was made the bubble even bigger than what it was in 08 and 09. And repeating the same pattern of 08 and 09, only that the bubble was three times, four, five times bigger. It's not a booming economy like Trump said it is, and it's not a, uh, a economy that's built on prosperity and built on the backs of uh, the businessman, businesswoman, things are closing, things are, uh, are, are closing all around us, uh, and there's still massive unemployment, there's uh, trade deficits at all time high, and uh, and the, the mainstream media is completely oblivious to the student loan debt, the auto debt, the car debt personal debt, credit card debt at all time high, people taking on more credit, um, and uh, people paying more for college that's not even uh, worthwhile anymore, and it's not even worth going to a university, um, because college degrees are completely uh, ob oblivious and completely unnecessary in today's internet world. And nevertheless, they get brainwashed by Karl Marx and leftist Marxist indoctrination camps, voted for four years, and come out thinking that uh, the world is going to hand them free stuff and think that the government can provide them with free stuff and that government, only government can micromanage the economy and only government can provide health care and we should have Medicare for all and single payer health care and or the other Keynesian government, uh, they think they need the thing that you have. They think that they need the thing that you want from you and are willing to implement a system that never worked and never has in every single country that's been implemented in. The 20th century is complete history of socialism and communism not working. Of course, they tell you the running joke as it's not real socialism, which is complete nonsense. It doesn't work because what they want, what they need, is they will take it from you. They don't care that it's yours and it belongs to you. They're going to take it by force. They're going to force you to get handed over to them, even though they make, even though they have iPhones and homes and computers and smartphones and things created by uh, things uh, uh, free of uh, government intervention and free of uh, interference from the federal are completely uh, only to the uh, the lack of government intervention and the rise of competition and free markets uh, creating the technology and creating the, the wonderful technology of computers, TVs, and phones that we have, 
had me to left that up the government who took a lot longer to get a phone, cell phone. Uh, they would only need you one phone every four years. Uh, they make it a department of phone service or something like that. And issue a phone every four years and no advancement, no nothing. And it would be slow and completely expensive and extremely slow and it completely no incentive, no desire to make anything better and take forever to create one. And if they did, it would only and it'd be so expensive that no one would be able to afford it and no one would be able to buy it because it's so expensive and it is caused by and it's created by those in government that think they can recommend the economy. And they can't even balance the budget. So we have companies like Apple, we have companies in our Samsung and all the other companies. Comcast that create internet, Com Cox Communication, Comcast, Samsung, um, Apple, Microsoft, Android, Windows, all those companies that create computers, phones, smartphones, technology, computers, tablets, all that is a part of free markets and profit incentive. People wanted to profit and wanted to make things that were that you wanted to buy. There's nothing greedy really about wanting to make money. There's nothing greedy really about wanting to make products and services that you're willing to spend your time and your money and your effort for to better your life and make it easier and simpler for everyone. Uh, cheaper for everyone else to buy, including the poor and the middle class. So while the rich get richer, the poor get richer and the middle class get richer too as a result of the rich getting richer. So we had a, we meaning the world, had from, from 2012, the poverty rate dropped for almost more than half uh, by 2012, and we were ahead of the curve by, I believe they estimated three years ahead of the curve that the poverty rate uh, dropped by more than three and a half uh, three and a half percent or something like that. It, was three and, it dropped by three, three and it dropped by three thirds of a percent, more than three half uh, in 2012, the poverty rate in the world. And that is due to free markets and competition. That is not due to Federal Reserve, Central Banking, and bubbles and uh, managing interest rates that is due to free markets and competition and trade and people buying things and moving up in the world. So if you have gadgets in your house, phones, tablets, computers, whatever, you're also getting richer too. If you make more than 30,000 a year, more than 33,000 a year, 30,000 a year, you are also considered in the one percent compared to the rest of the world living on one two dollar a day. So you are considered in the one percent. If you make more than thirty thousand a year. So the poverty rate in two thousand twelve dropped by more than three and a half percent uh all all around the world. The biggest growing economy right now in the world are those in Sahara, Africa, and over in Africa. That's the biggest growing economy in the world right now. And um, yeah, so that's how markets are driven, is by people wanting to innovate, create, and wanting to produce products and things that people want. Not due to government or central bank. Markets are not created for Central bank, even though they can't make micromanage, those are not the ones that are creating products and services. They're only creating uh, funny money called federal reserve notes for people to be forced to use and be forced to use by law to use because they can't use gold and silver because it's not legal tender uh, and it's not recognized by the government as legal tender, even though it should. 
we will not afford to be legal tender. So um, America was found on a revolution of central banks and manipulating currencies and creating a bubble. It was created by freedom and free market. It was not created by uh, people going into debt and people taking on college loans and people uh, not being able to pay them off and not being able to make businesses and uh, but it was in spite of the government, in spite of central bank, people overcome adversity challenges. And uh, since the industrial revolution, we have such an advancement in ag agriculture and technology that the world is getting connected more and more to the wide web, and people are learning more, and things are getting better because of people like Jordan Peterson and you guys and myself and millions of others who are, showing, who are teaching others about personal responsibility, personal accountability, taking responsibility for their actions and teaching people about freedom and liberty and teaching people about the elephant in the room that needs to be eliminated to fight over there. If that doesn't get eliminated, then nothing changes. Everything that seems to be different will remain the same and the same agenda that we all are, are, are subjected to uh, those who believe in government uh, and those who are using the agenda against us, problem reaction solutions, divide and conquer, will continue to use those same tactics as they always have for thousands and thousands of years to control humans even in the time of kings and queens and now, instead of being, now instead of everyone believing in the divine right of king, now it's the divine right of politicians. Now the next evolution is individual rights, not the divine right of politicians. But instead, an evolution of personal freedom, personal responsibility, and taking responsibility, and taking your life, and taking risk, and being responsible for yourself and taking freedom and responsibility in your own hand and you going according to your own values, moral, not according to how I want your life to be, not according to how I want you to be, but according to how you want yourself to be. How, what you find meaning, not what I find in your life meaning, but what you find meaning in your own life, what you're calling for, what you're what your meaning, meaning in life is and what your calling is to do. My message is just for people to understand freedom and to always address economic issues as uh, without uh, addressing economic, if, whether it's from Keynes, MMT, MMT monetary, modern monetary theory, mainstream or alternative economics, if they are discussing economics and they don't bring up the federal job, they do, do bring up government intervention and uh, the creating of money out of thin air and they bring up how socialism is bad and how free markets work and how the mechanism of the market works and how the mechanism of supply and demand and basic fundamentals in economics, but they don't bring up the weather to the really I can't trust them. I can't. But if they do bring up free markets, but they don't talk about the weather and they're not, they're not, they don't want to, but they do bring up free markets, then I am open-minded to what they happen to say. But if the 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 economic is based upon buzzwords and criticizing the one percent while owning three houses like Bernie Sanders, then I'm not gonna feel obligated and feel necessary to listen to what you have to say while you use your cell phone and you Twitter and while you use while you a hypocrite you using three houses and selling books uh, as not 
as using capitalism where you criticize it to like the hypocrite that Bernie Sanders is. Like the hypocrite that Alexandria Arcadio Cortez is, she criticizes the system too, but she has a cell phone, she has dresses, she has suits, she has all the things that free markets have created too. So she's included in the criticism too. Just like any of the other uh, politicians who use Twitter and uh, want to implement socialism and want to implement communism, but use Twitter and use cell phones and computers and all the other things. But if they promote free markets and they don't promote capital or they don't promote socialism or uh, they promote hands off approach and no central banks and no socialism, and they, they do care about economics, like Ron Paul, which is a extremely, extremely rare politician uh, that will forever be in his own lead of politicians and will forever be in his own uh, unique uh, time in which a politician at the right moment at the right time that America needed. He is not to be grouped in with other politicians like Ted Cruz or Marco Rubio or uh, AOC or Obama or Trump or Bush or H.W. Bush or any of the other presidents. Ron Paul is the only Ron Paul and it's the only consistent and the only honest politician that we ever had. And he's the only politician that stood up to the bank and called people in Congress right to the place authoritarian, which is exactly what they are, are authoritarian. They're not freedom advocates. They're not free markets. They're, they're completely authoritarian, which is exactly both bipartisanship to by Democrats and Republicans. So anyways, my life is not privileged by any standards, never had, never will be. It's a complete struggle every day. Again, like I said, I was born a preemie, and um, I will continue to struggle for the rest of my life. Uh, even if they do find a kill, that doesn't automatically exempt me from still struggling from terrible poverty. You know, I, don't, I can't walk like you guys. Um, again, if they find a kill for that, and they have a way of straightening my legs again. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to suffer from anything else or going to be completely exempt from any of our problems or completely exempt from suffering at all. So there's still going to be continuous suffering, but I'm going to continue to advocate for freedom no matter how I feel, no matter what day it is, whether it's raining, snowing, thunderstorming, lightning, raining like crazy, uh, me having a pounding headache, me not feeling good, me being nauseated, I don't care what, how I'm feeling or how I'm doing. Some way, somehow, somewhere, I'm gonna find inspiration and continue to promote this message until either the whole world wakes up or until people completely reject politics and statism all together. Until then, I'm not going to stop promoting liberty and freedom because everyone else is uh, not away. That's not going to stop me from promoting true freedom and free market. It's only going to embolden me as time goes on to promote it to that many more people. Because I want to bring newer people in these live streams and tell them that their congressmen and their congresswomen don't represent them and you represent yourself better than they do. And you know your life better than they do. You know what what you need. You know what you want better than the communists know what they, they want from you. You get what you want at the store. You get what you need. And if you want to share, share. You want to keep, keep. That's why it's called private property and not called uh, public. Meaning it's private property. It doesn't belong to the communists and so forth, no matter what buzzwords or what phrases they use or any of the other uh, free shit and free food and free whatever they uh, happen to throw at you or happen to argue 
against capitalism and profit and call you greedy and call you capitalist for making money. There's nothing wrong with making money. The whole elephant in the room is the better the so until the communists address the central bank and the socialists understand the economics, they will not address the elephant in the room. They will complete avoiding the fundamentals of supply and demand, productivity, and keep holding America back until they study the proper understanding of our free economic free market and proper incentive what creates people the incentive to want to create, innovate, and create better products and better services for everyone and make more money. The problem isn't making more money. The problem isn't big corporations. The problem is government getting in bed with big corporations. That's why we need to call out welfare, corporate welfare, not welfare, but corporate welfare, subsidies, not for one company or two companies, but all companies. And, and the incentive for all companies to get subsidies and no bailout for any company and bank. If the bank goes bankrupt, let them go bankrupt. They don't get a bailout. So um, that goes for any bank. That goes for, uh, uh, what's that one bank called? Um, Dutchworth Bank or Dutchworth Bank over in India, somewhere over in India, somewhere over in Europe. Uh, that goes for, um, that goes for, um, what's that bank? Um, let me take for a moment. Not planning pretty much, but the other one. I can't think of the name. What's the name of that bank? Hold on a sec. They go for Bank of America, what well power goes. Um I'll tell you the big bang. Hold on. City Group doesn't get a bailout. Goldman Sachs, that's the one. Goldman Sachs, I knew what it was, but I couldn't it was escaping my mind. Goldman Sachs. Uh Goldman Sachs doesn't get a bailout either, which is in Trump. Uh they were in they were heavily in Trump's administration, heavily, heavily, and Neocon too. So the the Goldman Sachs were in Obama administration, so are they in Trump administration. So same tune, different tune, but same overall agenda. Uh, bail out the banks and uh, kick the can down the road and print more money out of thin air. As long as the politicians continue to don't care about the deficit, as long as the people completely be oblivious to uh, the bailouts and don't make a think and make a noise and oppose them, the politicians will keep trying to kick the can down the road and don't address the elephant in the room, which is take away corporate subsidy and welfare and take away the incentive for banks to hand out loans and to uh, get out of the way of the people who do want loans and do want to uh, save money and get out of the uh, government get the government out of the business of merging banks and big corporations and the state and the government all together. Get the bank out of the way 
the government out of the bank business, separate the separation of banks and everything, separation of corporate welfare and everything, separation of state and everything else. So until there's a separation not only of church and state, the separation of banks in the state, separation of big mega corporations in the bank. From Obama to from Bush, Obama and Trump is the same policy. Foreign affairs doesn't change, domestic policy doesn't change, and it still could look like it is, but it's the same thing. Bail out the big bank and screw the little guy. So as long as they continue to bail out the big bank and push the can down the road and make the bubble a little bit bigger and continue to create money, nobody brings up the elephant in the room, especially mainstream economists and uh, the Keynesians and uh, the some that don't care about the elephant in the room. Uh, America's problems won't be addressed, the war won't be ended, and we'll continue on the endless path to disruption and fiat currency and won't be any sort of remedy or any sort of healing of America born in the master policy until corporate welfare is addressed and taken away from our companies. They are not uh, awarded to the bank and they are too big to fail and they need to fail. So that's what free markets are is when you don't have, when you have a business and you file for bankruptcy, the little guy doesn't get a bailout and the big guy doesn't get a bailout. That's fail for all of us. That means we don't bail them out. They don't bail themselves out from your money. You don't give them their money. You don't give them your money to them when they fail and they don't receive your money. They don't get a bailout. They don't get taxpayer money. They go bankrupt. They file for, for, file for bankruptcy, go bankrupt, and then another person comes in and takes over and runs a successful business model. And um, that goes for all corporations and all mega banks, including Goldman Sachs, City Group, and um, Wells Fargo and Bank of America. All of those banks need a bail. They shouldn't have gotten a bailout in no way, no nine to begin with. That's what made them bigger. That's what made them more prone to quantitative reason funny money, printing press, and they all got uh, their connection, and they were not, not a one got thrown in prison, or not a one got fined or anything like that uh, in the long run. So until the mainstream economists like Paul Krugman, uh, least Austrians, and some in the alternative media addressing that up in the room, but as long as the mainstream economists don't address the Federal Reserve, the media pundits don't address the Federal Reserve, like Rachel Maddow, uh, and some others, uh, uh, Rachel Maddow, um, Chris Matthews, TNT, the Young Turks, they don't address the Federal Reserve, um, and a whole host of others. Uh, Megan Kelly, she, she's not a journalist, she's a propaganda puppet like all the rest, like Major Maddow. Trump the puppet, he doesn't address the Federal Reserve, he only addressed it once out of maybe hundreds of millions of pounds, he could have addressed it by now, so he only addressed it once. He said the Federal Reserve was a bigger uh, problem in China, which he is correct, but he's not in any way changing the Federal Reserve or stopping the Federal Reserve from doing anything, and uh, he's not cleaning house and he's not draining the swamp. So different tune from Obama to uh, Trump, but same foreign policy, same intervention, bipartisanship, running up deficits, continuing to end the wars, and continuing to provide Iran to uh, speculation of nuclear uh, development, which they haven't had and they don't continue to have and they continue to comply with the Iran deal. They're in compliance with it. They have been in compliance with it. We are the ones that backed out, meaning the American government backed out of the deal. We are the ones that break out on, uh, didn't honor our contract and outside of the deal. And they are in compliance with it. They are on a threat to us. We shouldn't be provoking them 
into anything. We shouldn't put sanctions on them. We should lift the sanctions, talk with them, trade with them, and stop this Neil Khan nonsense of keep bombing for peace. It's like screwing for the identity. It's not going to work. Expecting different, expecting the same thing, doing the same thing, expecting different results, but continuing the same insanity. It's only to get us the can sit down the road and things are going to improve unless the federal and the war are addressed by mainstream economists and media pundits have an epiphany and they all wake up and they realize that the wars and fighters are intertwined and we are we are witnessing uh, years and years of blowback from uh, Central America and um, the migration crisis of Europe and the revolt of French people which that's totally solidarity and support them in, and uh, promoting and continuing to uh, protest against their own government Peacefully, of course, not rioting and broking uh, cop cars, even though that's, that's not technically uh, the police's car. They, they stole the money from the taxpayer, but they still didn't justify blowing their cars up and setting them on fire and destroying property and riots. So, again, I'm in solidarity with the peaceful protest and not the, the riots and tear gas and bombs and guns and all the other stuff. I'm I'm totally in support of protesting those who want to make the world different and don't uh, sit down and take it like the rest of uh, the French people who aren't in their homes anymore but are out in the streets. So I'm totally in solidarity with any and all peaceful protests. However, I draw the line where they start destroying property and they start destroying car, cop cars flipping cars over, setting things on fire because I violate the non-aggression principle. And that is an act of violence, and that is not an act of a peaceful human being acting with their own free will and uh, are acting in accordance with the golden rule. It is a violent human being that's willing to set things on fire and protest for the heck of it. It's not a free human being acting according to their own free will and following the golden rule. So again, the, until the media pundits are just the elephant in the room, the MSNBCs of the world are continue to go the waiting to crap. Um, the CNN continues to fall down for the right reason, uh, lower than Nickelodeon and some other station. They're going to continue to lose viewers. They're going to continue to lose people until they go out of business and. They'll have to start laying up employees, thinking that they're already off. So they're going to continue to leave viewership and continue to lose people as long as they continue to put out fake news. And they're not going to investigate the real thing, like the predator, human trafficking, the war on terror, uh, the, the crimes by the Clinton. They're not going to shine a light upon that. They're not going to shine a light upon uh, the petrol dollar. RT did, or what today did, did, did a little report on the petrodollar. Um, you won't see that in what they're mainstream media, the petrodollar, uh, the relationship between Saudi Arabia and America. And you won't see the protest of war uh, spoken openly and honestly on the mainstream media. And you won't hear criticism of the federal on mainstream media unless you listen to Ron Paul and you happen to be on a mainstream television and you happen to catch it, so, or Rand Paul occasionally. Or somebody like myself, who's been addressing the federal since 2009. So until the mainstream economists are just the elephant in the room, the MMT, the, mo the modern monetary uh, theory people, the progressive, the communist, until they're willing to address the intervention and the bipartisanship and divorce themselves from communism and socialism. They're going to continue to get criticized for believing in wrong things and uh, buzzwords and uh, phrases and wrong economics until they straighten out their economics and start making sense and not 
but I will not not then and stop them not even important but reality but it's completely detached from it so they continue to uh, correct their economic they will continue to get criticized rightfully so and get uh, ultracized and completely obliterated uh, by those who believe in the free market and those who believe in liberty even those who are their friends their friends are gonna uh, eventually revolt against them and go away from them as their friends read things like Batia, F.A. Hayek and the Mises of the world and the Rothbard and they, they'll be left alone wondering why they don't have any friends well it's because they're they're not making allies and they're making enemies everywhere they go. By demanding stuff from you and me, that doesn't belong to them. So I apologize if this is wrong. Again, not a privileged life at all. Struggle every single day from start to finish. Some days I have more depression. Some days I have more anxiety than others. Some days I have obsessive compulsive disorder really bad. Some days I shake really bad. So definitely not a privileged life, a very, very blessed and lucky life that depression didn't take me early and um, anxiety didn't uh, completely give me a nervous breakdown or depression didn't uh, get so severe that I resorted to some dramatic, uh, dramatic extremes or whatever, what that number would do, but uh just on the uh i kept that in the back of my mind that i never do it but do do people out there who don't get the help like i do and are suffering worse than i ever did so by that by according from how they're suffering compared to how i was it's nothing it's it's completely lucky and blessed compared to how they are with no help no plan, no nothing. You know, they're suffering with worse than I am. And I'm trying to put my life back together, get my situation in order, uh, take care of myself, and play video games, address freedom, address the, the, the news of the day, and uh, tell people about freedom and liberty however I can, and address my economic in a simple, easy digest. Uh, Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazel is a book I recommend. And The Anatomy of the State by Marianne Rothbard and Frederick Bastiat, The Law, The Book of Mental Policy. So if you read Frederick Bastiat, The Law, Henry Hazel, Economics in One Lesson, Murray Rothbard, The Anatomy of the State, or George Orwell's 1984, or um, the creature from Jack Jack Ireland. Any of those five books, you're gonna learn a lot more than he did in your public and private education ever from reading any of those five books that I recommended. So again, thank you all. I don't have a I don't have a, a privileged life, uh, and I don't have anything related to that, and uh, I don't consider myself that in any way, shape, or form. I don't consider myself better than anyone because I happen to research more or that I happen to put around the computers and video games. I just happen to know quite a bit about computers and video games. But I don't put myself up there as perfect. You know, I have things that I've done in the past and things that I've said that I'm not proud of that I wouldn't do today that I knew I did in the past. I would change it by giving the chance. So again, no privileged life. No easy way, no easy path, no um, no uh, silver spoon in my mouth by any means. Hard work, determination, effort, strong will, and the willingness to never give up. You know, because that's what strong people do, is they hold on for their life, and they, they somehow, some way, they find inspiration somewhere in life and fight back against their own demons or whatever you happen to call them yourself and that's what I do is I feel like the world needs somebody like me that's willing to explain economics and willing to explain freedom in a way that everyone can understand no matter your age no matter if you're 20 or you're 50. My job is to explain economics 
and explain freedom in a way that both a 20-year-old can understand it and a 50-year-old can understand it. But from my point of view, and my experiences. But my job is not to mold you and shape you into thinking like me. My job is to explain it to you so you understand it and so you can pass it on to other people. But my job is not to micromanage your life and to tell you how to live it or what to believe or what you aren't allowed to believe or what you are allowed to read, eat, drink, uh, sleep. It's not about any of those things. It's about just explaining the concept of freedom and liberty to everyone. Whether you whether you're twelve, twenty two, forty four, sixty six, fifty five, thirty, it's the way to explain it for everyone, not just one single person and one single um age age bracket or age group. It's for everyone to understand. You know, of course I can't explain it to a five year old, um and I can't explain it to a ten year old, but for anyone that's like uh, 15, 17, 18, um, I, uh, 18 and up, I could explain freedom to them, but anyone under 18 is probably going to have a harder time understanding it, and uh, as far as economics and as far as um, understanding that you don't use aggression, um, we'll probably have a harder time understanding it, but for those over 18, definitely won't have a problem understanding personal liberty and personal freedom. Um, personal choice and decisions in life. So bye. Take care. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye now. Bye.